We have a very interesting story, Kurt, uh, mm -hmm. about uh, uh, an acquaintance slash friend of mine, Sarah Silverman. Yeah, I know Sarah Silverman. Now, I have to tell people uh, I'm not going to rip Sarah Silverman. She was very nice to me when I did the Jimmy Kimmel show uh, when she didn't have to be. Put it that way. She went out of her it way. nice. She went out of her way to be nice and accommodating, and and she didn't have to do any of that. I mean, she went above and beyond. Um, so, and you know, I've known her for, since pretty much since I got to town. Uh, I, haven't, I don't think I've seen her in the last ten years, because uh, anyway. But um, she's. I just want to say that. So this story is involves her. But first, I'm going to show you this story, right? Because it it leads into it. So Governor DeSantis in Florida, uh, he proposed a new civilian military force in Florida that he would control. That's the headline at CNN. But if you read the article, it says he's going to reestablish the World War II era civilian military force that he, not the Pentagon, would control. DeSantis pitched the idea Thursday as a way to further support the Florida National Guard during emergencies like hurricanes. The Florida National Guard has also played a vital role during the pandemic in administering COVID-19 tests and distributing vaccines. So he wants to bulk up that service. In a nod to the growing tension between Republican states and the Biden administration over the National Guard, DeSantis also said this unit called the Florida State Guard would be not encumbered by the federal government. He said this force would give him the flexibility and the ability needed to respond to events in our state in the most effective way possible. If Florida moves ahead with DeSantis's plan to reestablish the civilian force, it would become the 23rd active state guard in the country. So there's 22 other states currently doing exactly what DeSantis is proposing. DeSantis office said in a press release, joining California, <coughs> Texas, and New York also have this thing he's proposing. These guards are little known auxiliary forces with origins dating back to the advent of state militias in the 18th century. So here's where it starts to get involving Sarah Silver person. <laughs> Yeah. I, don't, I don't want. I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to offend anybody. So Joanne Reed tweets this article out that you and I just read together about DeSantis doing something completely normal that twenty-two other states currently do, including New York and California, two of the bluest states in the country. So she tweets this article out, and she says. So, dot, 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 y'all know this is fascisty bananas, right? <laughs> fascisty bananas, which is, by the way, name of my old punk band in college, fascisty bananas. <laughs> sure, fascisty bananas is kind of clunky as an insult, but Joy isn't allowed to. Oh, I can't say that joke. Oh, really? <laughs> so close. Mm. She got hacked. Yeah, well, yes. Yes, I, I don't I don't you know what it, it's I, I would probably get away with it. But and it's I would be correct to get away with it. But <laughs> right. I don't need the fucking headache. Uh, it's but it's a joke referencing that she used to uh, be homophobic and use gay as a as a slur. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. You would think I'd be able to tell say that joke. You could say that. That's I, literally what the joke was. I know. Gay as a slur. <laughs> yes. Uh, so she uses feisty bananas. It's clunky as an insult, but Joy isn't allowed to use gay as a slur anymore. That's the joke. <laughs> that's, right. I could do that that's joke. what she yeah. would do. Because that's, that's what she would do, yes. She had to give it up, and now she's got to come up with original material because she can't just say gay at things anymore. <laughs> yes. And so she did that. She called it fasc fascist. So she's saying govern because that's the understand. So I've been saying this on this show. And so what this is, what the Democrat and the media have done, what the Democrats and the media have done is they can't win elections anymore because they're not offering anything to the people. So they have to demonize their opponents at every turn. And so they're now running on a narrative that half the country are white supremacists, fascists and Nazis. That's it. So if you're not a Democrat, you're a white supremacist and a fascist and a Nazi. And that's it. And, and you're never going to be and you'll never get in trouble for doing that. What's that, Kurt? And also a vector of disease. Yes. Right. Yes. You're right. So I just want to show you how many that got four thousand five hundred 
retweets, and 17,700 likes. And if you read the article, you know that this is propaganda from Joanne Reed because the article says he's doing something completely reasonable. Governor of Florida is doing something completely reasonable, even though he's a Republican. He's doing something completely reasonable that 22 other states, including New York and California, the state she lives in, actually does the same thing. Uh, so Sarah Silverperson got upset at that. <laughs> She didn't get upset. She just, well, whatever. She called it out. She goes, please read the article before you post this stuff. You're a news outlet. The truth has to matter. Uh, well, I would like to think that the truth has to matter. But, Sarah, since when has the truth actually mattered? When the hell, what the hell kind of a Democrat are you, Sarah? You know the <laughs> truth doesn't matter. They just did Russiagate for five years. They said Bernie was working with the Russians. Truth never matters to Democrats. OK, so she's asking for truth from the Democrats. And all I have to say is you brought this on yourself. Uh, because uh, Joanne Reed said, hi, Sarah. Thanks. I did read it. That's why we did the segment tonight with Nikki Fried and Amanda on air. Here's another great read on what Ron DeSantis is doing and why it's worrisome to anyone who cares about democracy. Uh. So, again, the people that their political opponents aren't just Republicans. They're the enemies of democracy. They're fascists. They're white supremacists. They're Nazis. Do you see this? What's going on? And this is coming from MSNBC. This is the Democratic narrative now because they can't win elections anymore. So they have to completely demonize not only their political opponents, but half the country. That's what that's what this is. So. She did read it, Sarah. What she's telling you is that she's a professional fucking liar, Sarah. Do you not know that about Joy Ann Reed? Of course you don't. Because she doesn't really pay close attention to the stuff. And as soon as someone like Sarah Silverperson does pay close attention, they get outraged. Like, holy shit, Joy Ann Reed is lying about this article. Why the fuck would she do that? That doesn't help. <laughs> as soon as she looks into it, she sees that the people who are on her side are complete fucking lying bullshitters. Because that's what Joy Ann Reed just admitted. I did read the article, so I knew it wasn't fascisty bananas, but I said it was anyway. <laughs> Do you understand? Do you see now? Joy Ann Reed's lying, Sarah, and she fucking knows it. And I appreciate your attempt to try to hold her feet to the fire one time. It would be nice if you went back after that and said, <laughs> then why are you lying? Why are you misleading everybody on Twitter if you read the article? Well, um, other people came at Sarah and said, why did you assume she didn't read the article? Black people do read articles before. Oh, no. Yeah, that's where they went. Black people do read articles before posting dear, especially an accomplished black female journalist who the disgust is on her show. What's wrong with you, racist? <laughs> that's what they said. That's a Do you think that's fake? You think that's a, a, I, I feel like that's like K-Hive nonsense, you know? Like those people supposedly love Kamala Harris and attack anyone. I would. That uh, seems so fake. It. You would think it's fake, Kurt. Yeah. Yes, you would think that's got to be fake. I see stuff like that that's been real for the last five years. So <laughs> yeah, I don't doubt would, that stuff anymore. <laughs> yeah. Here's another one. Here's another one. It says, I can't believe she went after a prominent black woman. <laughs> wow. Racist Sarah Silverman attacks black journalists in ways she would never attack a white woman in multiple <laughs> tweets. What? I I don't know what to even say to that. I don't know. What do you? I can't believe it either. We all know that if someone is prominent, <laughs> they are above reproach. She just asked her to read the article and stop scaremongering people. Stop press pushing propaganda. That's all she did. Joy and Reed said she did read the article, which means she's worse than that. She's a liar. 
And this that's their but that's the Democrat flex. And now Sarah Silverman knows what it feels like to break out of the cult. As soon as you say something about the cult, that's what happens. You get excommunicated and called a racist just like that. That's it. It's a cult, Sarah. The Democratic Party is a cult and facts don't matter. Truth doesn't matter. Just like the Republican Party, by the way. They're not different. They're all serving the same masters. And this idea that voting for a racist, maniac, enemy of the people like Joe Biden, who's also a sex harasser, somehow makes you make is better than Donald Trump or anyone else. <laughs> Joe Biden's a war criminal. He's a torturer. He's the worst things you could be in. the. He, he built those cages that they were putting kids in and still are. He made it so you can't get rid of your student loan debt or your medical debt. He's the enemy of workers. He's the architect of our racist prison system for profit. So the idea that voting for Joe Biden was a vote against racism or white supremacy is a joke. And if you looked into it, you would know that. Just like if you looked into Joanne Reed, you would know she's a lying, pathological lying, propagandist, smear merchant, homophobe, who also is a slanderer of gay people and then lies about it. That's who she is. So what happened then was Sonny <laughs> from The View chimed in. She said, the hubris to think you can accuse a Harvard-educated woman of not reading. <laughs> Do you see what happened, Sarah? Not Welcome to my world. Welcome to my... She had the most innocuous critique of somebody who's a Democrat. And that is off limits, Sarah. You are not allowed to do that in the Democratic cult. And if you do it, you're immediately called a racist. Or someone accusing a Harvard-educated woman of not reading. What the F? What is... <laughs> you can't do that. She's a prominent person. That would be like asking Oprah about the sex abuse that was done at the Oprah Winfrey Leadership <laughs> Academy. You just can't bring that stuff up. Sarah... Sarah Silverman, whether what do you realize it or not, you are just as bad as those hackers who inserted homophobic comments into Joy's old blogs. <laughs> uh, again, Sarah Silver person, very nice person, and here she is uh, to respond to this. What? Look, look at the chagrin. She can't believe what's happening. It's been happening to me since I wouldn't vote for Hillary. Since I wouldn't reward the people who cheated Bernie Sanders. And we were disrupting the 2016 convention. And Sarah Silverman said the people who were upset that Bernie was cheated by the DNC and the Hillary Clinton campaign, which it's a fact. That's why people had to step down from the DNC and Hillary's campaign. That's why. She said that when we were disrupting this and booing and making our un. Uh, happiness known to the establishment that we were being ridiculous. She told the people in the crowd as they were turning sound cannons on them, turning the lights off on them, hiding them and their signs from the cameras at a convention. Uh, she said that those people were being ridiculous, which a lot of people took the, uh, in a, in, you know, hard. So, and then she never went on to criticize the Democrats. She didn't, that was it. After Bernie dropped out, that's it. And so now she's so, but I didn't stop. I kept reminding people that we have two right wing parties in this country and that you're a chump if you think voting for uh, Joe Biden is an answer to anything except more misery for this country, which is what it is. And uh, well, here, here she is. Watch, here she's going to respond. On side, we can't even critique anyone in your own party without punishment. One of the hosts of The View was like, what hubris for Sarah Silverman to accuse a black woman of not reading? Oi, Jesus H, what the, f I fucking, I surrender. Good grief, 
I don't, I don't want any trouble. I cannot believe I need. So I don't want any trouble either, Sarah, but I'm not going to bite my tongue over it. And so I tell the truth. And when I see people like Joy Ann Reed blatantly lying, trying to divide our country in such a disgusting way, or I see people like Chris Hayes or Rachel Maddow propagandizing at the top of their lungs about no matter what it is, I'm going to call it out. And it has more of a sting because I'm supposed to be on their side. That's why it's actually more effective. <laughs> so I, I actually am supposed to can't have the same <laughs> viewpoints as them. So I understand why she's afraid now because she's like, I just want to have a show business career and I don't need this shit. Well, me too, but I'm going to keep sticking my chin out to tell the truth because what the fuck is the point of life anyway? Yeah, I'm taking a lot of shit. I have taken a lot of shit since 2015 when I wouldn't reward the people who cheated Bernie Sanders. Since Ever since then, I've been persona non grata and called every fucking name in the book white supremacist. I've been called a Nazi. I've been called a Republican. I've been called a Trumper. I've been called a grifter. I've been, now I'm being called anti-vax because I'm sticking up for workers and I'm repeating the same things Anthony Fauci said last year which is you can't force someone and mandates are wrong. But they're calling me an anti-vaxxer for that. So now she could just a little, see, see what happens, Sarah? You just step one inch, one hair outside of the cult narrative and you're going to be called a racist. One hair. Let's watch her again say this. On side, we can't even critique anyone in your own party without... Punishment. One of the hosts of The View was like, what hubris for Sarah Silverman to accuse a black woman of not reading. Oi, Jesus H, what the? F I fucking, I surrender. Good grief. I don't, I don't want any trouble. I cannot believe I need to say this, but I did not criticize Joy Ann because she's black, but because she's a... a Harvard educated journalist with the responsibility ideally of showing the whole picture and not just a piece of a picture. I feel your pain, Sarah. I've been, <laughs> I, that, that's been a story of my life for the last five years. Hey, no, I just want people to see the whole picture. No, you're a racist, Trumper, grifter, anti-vaxxer. Now, ho hopefully you'll have a little bit more sympathy for someone in my position. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Well, Jimmy. But again, I want to that the reason why this is interesting is because Sarah Silver person is a good person. I like Sarah Silverman and I think her heart is always in the right place. And but she's, again, a Democrat. And when you are at this in since 2016, if you're a Democrat, you're in a cult. It's a cult. And you just fought, you just felt the re repercussions from stepping out. That's what happens when you fucking criticize a cult. That's not what happens when you criticize a news person who nobody trusts in the fucking world anyway. A news, a corporate paid pharma funded news person you can't criticize. That's a cult. You're in a fucking cult. And no, the facts don't matter. And they're going to they're going to propagandize you, Sarah, into pretending the people who don't don't vote for Democrats are white supremacists, Nazis and fascists. There's no gray area. Even though Joe Biden, when he was running for office, he was running on the premise he could work with those people. I'll get things done. I know how to work with these people. You mean he's going to work with fascists <laughs> and white supremacists? Do you see the knot you tie yourself in when you go down this road? So I've been pushing back against that bullshit Democratic Party narrative, and I've been catching that for fucking five years straight. And so I don't like to see Sarah Silverman be uh, unfairly attacked. But it does make me feel a little better at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it, I, I'm not going to lie to you. That I'm like, oh, just like when they went after Trevor Noah. So Trevor Noah made an obvious observation and joke about the CEO of Moderna, and they called him anti-vax. She makes an obvious critique of Joy Ann Reed, and they call her racist, and they attack her. Well, 
So I, the more that this happens, the more it will become obvious to people that it's a fucking cult. So that's the part that I think is good. It's everything else is bad. And I certainly don't, I'm not happy about what happened to Sarah Silverman. That's not what I'm saying. Um, here, here's how it was reported. Breitbart, Sarah Silverman. By the way, can I just point out, here's the interesting thing. So she says that the woman from The View, Sonny, said, how dare you mm. criticize a black woman? That's not what Sonny said. <laughs> here's what Sonny said. Sonny said, the hubris to think you can accuse a Harvard-educated woman of not reading. So the irony there is that Sarah misread that tweet. <clears throat> so she was conflating these tweets with this tweet. And so Sonny didn't actually attack her because of that. She just attacked her for criticizing Joy Ann Reed. That's it. You're not supposed to do that. Um, Jimmy. What? I, I have a question. Like, uh, <laughs> the hubris of questioning a Harvard-educated edu woman if she didn't read. <laughs> Since when is that a crime? I, I, I question Harvard now that I know Joanne Reed went there. Yeah, I know. Like, I, I, I think less of Harvard, I have to say, in a major way. So that's the irony there. So Sarah actually is conflating tweets. and But I get why she's doing that. That's got to be horrible. You just make an obvious tweet and then people start attacking you as racist in public. I know. <laughs> I know. I know what that feels like. Uh, let's listen to it one more time. On side. We can't even critique anyone in your own party without punishment. One of the hosts of The View was like, what hubris for Sarah Silverman to accuse a black woman of not reading? Oi! Jesus H, what the f Oh. I fucking I surrender. Good grief. I don't, I don't want any trouble. I cannot believe I need to say this, but I did not criticize Joy Ann because she's black. <clears throat> but because she's a a Harvard educated journalist with the responsibility ideally of showing the whole picture and not just a piece of a picture. It is hubris to think that you're going to clear something up on Twitter. <laughs> that is a form of hubris. <laughs> Whoa, that, I'll fix this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't. You, you're not allowed to criticize uh, anybody uh, who's seen as fighting against the white supremacists. That's just it, there's two. That's it. They want everybody split against each other in this country because the oligarchs can't win elections anymore. And if they if they lose the mirage of a two party system, people will actually revolt. If they look because it's a mirage, there is not a two party system. Look what the fuck is going on right now. They just transferred five trillion dollars to the richest people in the country. They just bloated the military budget up again. It's almost at 800 billion a year. Nobody wants it. And they're denying uh, a minimum wage and health care. Still, the people you voted for are still denying people health care. No other country's doing that. You don't think that's fascist? What is that? What is that called? That's fascism because that's the government in collusion with big pharma and the health insurance companies coming together not to help you, but to screw you. That is the definition of fascism. <laughs> Here's uh, Breitbart said Sarah Silverman dragged as racist for correcting Joy Reid. I did not criticize Joy Ann Reid because she's black. <laughs> Look at the picture. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, they covered it. Sarah Silverman called racist for... Sarah Silverman accused of racism for attacking Joy Reid. I did not criticize her because she's black. Uh, guess guess who uh, who's, who supported her? Stephen L. Miller. Ooh, that's got to be tough. <laughs> Dragger queen Stephen L. Miller says, and he got 2,444 likes. <laughs> I mean, Sarah's tweet did very well. It's got 9,000 likes. So she was on to something. And so that's why they had to beat her down as fast as possible. Um, Sarah Silver said not loving being co-opted by the right that she's referring to this uh, as a liberal I care about the truth and point it out wherever it belongs 
unlike the Democratic Party or the establishment news people. I like Joanne Reed. Why? We'll never know. <laughs> I think she's saying she likes jo <laughs> Joanne Reed because I don't want to be called a racist anymore. I want to sit at the cool table still. Yes. God forbid. About, I don't want to be out of the cult. Here, here, let's get back to her. She said, I like Joanne Reed. I do not care for DeSanti's politics. I find his purely political anti-vax stance is just that. Again, that's not what the article was about. It wasn't about anything. But she has to do that because no. she's out of the cult. Don't she, take me. Yes. Take him. That's right. She has to do that. Uh, and as a, I like, and as a liberal, I care about the truth, unless it was hacked from Hillary Clinton's hard drive before her interns got a chance to destroy <laughs> it. <laughs> okay. We have no right to see that. <laughs> and so now here's Twitchy's team. I don't know what this is, Twitchy team. That's I think that's Glenn Beck's. Oh, oh, poor thing. Sarah Silverman doesn't like the taste of her own lefty medicine after lefties paint her as a racist for calling out Joy Ann Reed. Oh, that's Bill. So that's what she also meant. Um, that what that, why she didn't want to not loving being co-opted by the right. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. the, so that's what she said. The hubris to think you can accuse a Harvard. She didn't say black, but other people did. And you can totally understand why Sarah uh, made that mistake. Uh, and it's not like Joanne Reed, you know, this is her we, this is her thing. Joanne Reed accuses Elon Musk of racism. Joanne Reed accuses opponent pushing for debate of making white man demands. <laughs> uh, by the way, the, this is from CNN. The proposal from DeSantis comes on the heels of Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin's directive warning that National Guard members who refuse to get vaccinated against the coronavirus will have their pay withheld and be barred from training. Does that sound fascist? What is what's which is fascist? He's creating another civilian National Guard or the government is going to take people's pay away unless they take a medical treatment, a medical procedure. Which one of those things sounds fascisty bananas to you? You to fire someone, coerce them into taking a medical treatment. I don't know. I thought the Nuremberg. I thought that we. I thought we figured this out at, at the Nuremberg trials. I thought we did. I thought the Nuremberg Code took care of all this. Do you see how fast it happens? Boom. And now you don't have. The, you don't have the freedom to travel anywhere in America. You don't have the freedom of speech. You don't have the freedom of anything. It happens just like that. And we're in it. We're in it now. So we'll see if people push back. Any anything you like to say about that? Again, this is uh You know who Joanne Reed reminds me of? Did you ever see that movie V for Vendetta? Yes. Like like the propaganda. It is really disturbing she went to Harvard because that she's consciously making these lies. Yes. And probably think things of it like a, a game, like, you know, you gotta play the game and do it. Like her response to Sarah, because Sarah was did have hubris, assuming the best that she merely didn't read it, instead of that she's a liar. She goes, she used it as a chance to promote the show. Hey, Sarah, that's great. Check out the show where yeah. we talk about it. Yeah. That was Joy's response. The other people were offended on her behalf. Yeah. She was like, ooh, a celeb. We're yeah. Getting the <laughs> uh, that's the, the so Joy Ann Reed is uh, a coward and a bully. That's what bullies are. They're cowards. So Joy Ann Reed does whatever her mob likes at the moment. Whoever she can beat up on, whatever gets a retweet. Uh, so like back in the late uh, 08, 09, it was cool to uh, smear gay people and say horrible things about gay people and Muslims. And so she did that. She did say horrible things about gay people and because um, that was rewarded by her mob. She wrote it on her blog. She didn't write it in a text to a friend. She did it to right. get hit clicks and views. <laughs> right. And so now that's not accepted anymore. And she's got a, a job on virtue signaling MSNBC. So what kind of horrible shit is you could call anybody you don't like your political opponents. You can call them white supremacists and fascists. Which is another form of crazy bullying. That's just the hor whatever horrible thing. And that's, and that's why her fans started immediately calling Sarah a racist.
because that's the kind of things they do. That's what bullies do when confronted. They do an underhanded smear instead of actually talking to the point that Sarah Silverman was making was that how could you read that article and then tweet out that he's being a fascist? And that she's shocked that <laughs> news people on MSNBC are fucking liars and propagandists. That's funny. And why she <laughs> likes Joanne Reed, we'll never know. But go ahead. That's way beyond. I like your saying about how they're like adult children of alcoholics. Yes. Who like loyal. De- but I think it's getting worse than that. Now they are like Dottie Sandusky to me. Yeah. Yes. Dottie doesn't go in the basement. <laughs> like, <laughs> that level of not wanting to know is uh, you're talking to Max about it. I told you a friend of mine said, I don't need to see footage. I've had somebody literally tell me they don't need to see evidence of things. Of, of a, right. I don't need I to be informed on the facts of the story I'm talking about. I know how I emotionally feel. That's what that's where we're at. And there are half the country is white supremacists, half the country is Nazis, and half the country should be uh, whatever. I don't know, starved and I'll, I don't know what they want to do with them. But it's this pretend we're saving democracy. Let me tell you something. Your democracy was taken from you a long time ago, you fucking chump. And if you think Kamala Harris and Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer are going to give you democracy, you're a chump. You're a chump. Hey, come see a live stand-up show. We're doing New Year's Eve in Studio City. In January, we'll be in Raleigh, North Carolina. In February, we're going to be in Philadelphia. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for all our tickets.